Hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and we're going to take a look at ticker symbols M-Y-O-S, O-R-E-X, and E-S-P-R. Okay, first off, M-Y-O-S, uh, notice here it closed in the 50 to 70 bull zone on RSI. Fasto had a bullish crossover and closed above the 20 oversold line. There was a bullish crossover on ADX, the plus DI line crossed the uh, uh, ADX line to the upside. So that was a bullish uh, crossover. Um, if you look here, this is Friday's candle. And um, no notice how there's this long upper wick that formed. The long upper wick shows uh, profit taking and uh, possibly dilution. So um, yeah, it, w when you see a, a big spike like this, and then there's a sell off from a high of day and a long upper wick forms, that's always a red flag and signals that the uh, share price is under attack and um, could signal a potential pullback the following following day. Um, if you look here at the uh, previous trend, you'll see here that uh, MYOS made a, a, ha, had a large volume spike back here on the 11th, similar to the big volume spike on Friday, and the following day was red. And then you notice here there was a, a green uh, volume spike above the m most of the other volume bars. Next day was red. Same thing here, volume spike. Next day was red. So if this pattern continues, then uh, this will likely be red tomorrow. That's been the historic trend. Uh, um, you, you, what we want to do is look for a bullish change in trend. If you're if you're long MYOS, you want to see uh, uh, another green candle form tomorrow, and that would signal that there's a possible change in trend. And what you want to see is this middle Bollinger Band at 310 hold. As long as the middle Bollinger Band holds, then that there should be an uptrend. It should push higher. If there's a drop below the middle Bollinger Band, then that could signal downside risk, putting uh, the 50-day simple moving average down here at 208 on deck. The key level to break is going to be the January 17th close here. If it can get above the January 17th close, then that's going to put the upper Bollinger Band and possibly this high close back here on the 11th on deck. Okay, so uh, since MYOS was uh, breaking down end of day, what we do is, uh, you know, you want to look at the uh, the 15 minute chart, and if you see here, the the 15 minute chart turned really bearish. Um, you notice Fasto closed the oversold line. Uh, ADX had this bearish crossover here. And then um, what what really happened that that showed this was uh, breaking down was this big candle right here. No, notice the drop from 560 down below the middle Bollinger Band. When, when the middle Bollinger Band support level broke, that was signaling downside risk. The next uh, support level is this 50-day, uh, the the 50 simple moving average that was tested and held. That needs to hold on Monday. If it drops below 351, the 350 uh, support zone here on the 50 SMA, you could see a drop down here to the uh, to this this conjection of the, this convergence of three different moving averages down below you have the hundred the 200 and the 300 basically all at the same uh, level right around three dollars so if it breaks 350 support you're looking at a drop to three okay the uh, bearish uh, crossover here on MACD was a red flag signaling downside risk along with this uh, um, PSAR bear flip. Notice the green dots flipped above the share price. For us, MYOS, MYOS will not be back in play until it gets back above the middle Bollinger Band. Okay, let's look at OREX. OREX made a very nice move on Friday. <clears throat> Notice that it, it closed uh, above in the overbought power zone on RSI. So it, it's going to need to like push higher above 70 on RSI and then it, it closed above 80 on FASTO. So it's going to need to uh, move higher above 80 on FASTO as well. If you look back here at this previous run, you look at this run here, uh, the, it did push higher above 80 and above 70. So it has a history where it shows that it can keep pushing higher. Um, the, the one thing to keep an eye on, there, this is already a, a four-day run. Um, look at the multiple uh, green volume bars and multiple uh, green candles and or white candles. And so the question is, you know, how, how uh, you know, how many days in a row can this be up without pulling back? Today's can or Friday's candle did close above the upper Bollinger Band. So if the candles do pull back and work back into the Bollinger Bands, the EMA four at 371 will be the key support level to hold, along with this three, uh, you know, right below 380 level, which was the high close here on the fifth. You want to see that level hold on a pullback and turn into support for a push higher. Okay, there was a nice volume spike. Uh, there was a, a parabolic SAR bullish flip. Those are very bullish developments. And there was a MACD bullish crossover on both time frames. So all that is 
really uh, bullish for OREX. So uh, we like this uptrend. We just uh, want, want to see if maybe it got a little bit ahead of itself or if it can uh, keep pushing higher. The the 15 minute chart, this is a, a 15 minute chart here. And um, what it shows is a very strong uh, uh, multi-day uptrend. Notice how the candles have been uh, riding higher above the middle Bollinger Band. The middle Bollinger Band is this dotted purple line. This close below the middle Bollinger Band at three o'clock was a red flag and it looked like the chart was starting to break down similar to the other uh, small cap biotech uh, stocks. Uh, many of them sold off into the close on Friday, but this one did bounce and, and it closed above this middle Bollinger Band. So so that's going to be the key level to hold. Bulls want to see this uh, middle Bollinger Band currently at 398. It's going to be around $4 at the open and, and you want to see that level hold. If it breaks below that level, you could see a drop down to 374, down to this uh, 50 SMA and, and notice that that's lined up right now with the bottom of this channel. So so in order to stay bullish bulls, the, the candles need to keep forming above the middle Bollinger Band on Monday on the 15 minute chart. Notice there was a bearish crossover on MACD on both time frames. So that was a red flag. And then also the PSAR bear flip was a red flag as well. Notice the green dots were below the candles and then they flipped above. So uh, something to keep an eye on. Another one to look at here is ESPR. Okay, this stock made a very bullish move on Friday. Um, notice down here, uh, th this is a daily chart, and notice there was a close above the 300-day simple moving average at 1477. That's right here, the uh, the um, the green uh, blue line is 300-day simple moving average. Notice how it closed well above that and well above the upper Bollinger Band. That was a really frothy move. The candles may need to work back into the bands, and if they do, what you want to see is you want to see this 300-day uh, th simple moving average and EMA4 support levels hold. You want, you'd relate to see the 300 turn into support for a push higher. There was a gap fill on Friday. This big white candle filled the gap from back here in June. Notice that this upper wick right here almost filled the gap, but, but not quite. This is the top of the gap, the green line, and the bottom of the gap is this green line down here. And so now this gap is finally filled after multiple months on a huge volume spike. There was uh, bullish crossovers last week on <clears throat> MACD uh, and the week before on MACD, so that uh, MACD was really heating up. Um, the, the one thing to be concerned with is uh, FASTO up here in RSI. If you notice, you've got FASTO closed at 98.96. That's super, super uh, hitting temporary overbought levels. FASTO, the highest it goes is a hundred, so there's no juice left in the fast fasto tank to push higher. Um, if you notice back here, look at all these spikes. Look at uh, each one of these circles with the spike represents a top, and and notice how and these are where the circles line up with uh, fasto. Notice this was a top. This was a top top topped out right here look it topped out here on this spike and so each one of these spikes here is correlated to a a, a, a top and, and red candles forming the following day so the question is will, will that history repeat will uh, uh, Will ESPR find resistance at this level now that FASTO is overbought? If you notice here, RSI is hitting 71 and now in the overbought power zone. The last time it got up to this level, if you look down here, it had topped out as well. So you could see some consolidation at this level. That is the historic trend. If it does, you want to see the candles work back into the bands and hold the 300-day simple moving average. Notice how this chart was difficult to read. What you want to do is go to the weekly chart. Notice this is the this is the ESPR weekly chart. And so so notice how this is the same time frame, a little bit longer, but same time frame. But look how cleaned up and smoothed out the chart is. This is much easier to read than the, that previous daily chart. Notice the bullish development this week was the close above the 50-week simple moving average here, the uh, the green line, which is at 1353. The close was above the upper Bollinger Band, so the candles may need to work back into the bands. If they do, you want to see the 50-week simple moving average turn into support. If it does, then there, then there could be a launch off of that and, and, and a eventual move down the line to the next resistance level, which is going to be the the, uh, the next simple moving average resistance level on this chart, which is the 100 week simple moving average at 3512. So there is going to be some work to get through to get there. Um, there was a bullish volume spike. Um, if you look here, there was also a bullish crossover on ADX. The, the, the red flag, once again, is FASTO. Look at FASTO at 99.15. You know, there's no juice in the tank. It's temporarily overbought. It's, it's pushing 100 and maxed out so you could see a little uh, pullback next week 
RSI does look good. Notice how it broke well above 50. It had not been above 50 except for this one little spike here in many, many months. You know, you're looking at this is the strongest this chart has looked in, in, in uh, the last couple of years. So, so this is a big uh, potential change in trend for ESPR. Um, you know, it, 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 there just might need to be a little consolidation before the next push higher. Okay, thanks for viewing this chart. If you enjoy uh, uh, learning about technical analysis and you'd like to learn more, please check us out at mychartcoach.com and our YouTube channel at mychartcoach.com. That's where we uh, teach uh, how, how to trade using charts and technical, technical analysis all through the trading day. So if you'd like to learn more, please come and join the fun. All right, thank you so much.